What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian. I hope you're having a great day. So today we're going to go over a really OP, really great, versatile melee, sort of not melee, frost build. And I say melee, not melee, because obviously you'll have frost build up on both of your weapons. So you can definitely go in and just slash everyone to death. But you'll also have the option of using a really powerful AoE Art of War that does frost damage and it's probably one of the most OP Ashes of War in this game so far. I know my outfit isn't looking super frosty but the only blue armor sets I've found were... well, not ideal. But I guess that's subjective and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as they say. So we're going to go through weapon choices, affinity, Ashes of War, but I'll also go through the talismans, uh, the build stats, everything you need to know to make this build really powerful. So first off, the Ashes of War. Now there's only three cold damage Ashes of War. One is practically useless for this build because it puts frost on your weapon, but because we'll already have frost affinity on our blades, it's not going to do anything for us. Now the second one is going to be Hoar Frost Stomp. And there's another one that I want to try out with you guys, it's called Ice Spear. We'll see how it works. And the good thing is that some of these Ashes of War, you can get super early game and you can already have frost on your weapons. So let's start with the Ice Spear. The way you get the spear is in the Lyurnia area. There's a lot of ice stuff here, so we'll be here a lot. Basically, you want to make your way to the Gate Town Bridge. You want to sit at the side of Grace and you want to fast forward to Nightfall. Because we'll have to fight a Knight Cavalry enemy to get the Ice Spear. Alright, let's see... I don't know exactly where he spawns. I'm not sure if I fought him or not. Hopefully I didn't. Oh, there he is. Easy peasy. I kind of want to fight him off my horse to show you Horfrost Stomp, how stupid it is. I'm probably gonna do that. Hey, big guy. Where, where are you going? And once you knock him off your his horse, you can go and get a critical. Oh, you can't! Oh no! That's unfortunate. That's why I said it's like a melee, not melee build, because look at this, like, stupid. I know I'm super overleveled for this, obviously I'm endgame, like, level 136 or whatever. But still. Alright, Ash of War, Ice Spear. So once you get an Ash of War, obviously you need a spear for this Ash of War, so if you're using a spear, I guess you can try this out. Uh, you go select it, and you click on cold. And now you see, on the attribute scaling, it'll start scaling with intellect, as well as strength and dex. Now this isn't a great spear, it's just the only spear I could buy to show you guys. Let's go find us some enemies so I can try this, see if it's actually good or not. This looks like a willing participant. Hi bud. What the... What is that range dude? Okay, I see. Oh wow, it stuns too, that's hilarious. <laughs> You have to be pretty close to do it. I thought you'd get away with like, uh... no, stop! I want to spear you. <laughs> All right, that's interesting. It takes a lot of FP. I find you feel like the range is not that great, but you know, if you want to play around with it, I guess it's funny. Yeah, I would say it's not that bad. For the second Ash of War and the one you'll probably be using this whole time. It's in this area as well. It's north of uh, the academy here. It's in Acaria Manor. Well, it's not in Acaria Manor, but it's right beside it in this lake. So I've already got it, but uh, you want to fast travel to this point and then you just want to make your way east. The scarab will be invisible, so like you'll have to follow its, uh, its path and then just wait for it and then kill it. Oops, you don't want to go into this manor. You know, I kind of dig the spear. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, I'm probably gonna make like a paladin build on my second run, so I might actually use a spear. 
So if you don't have it, the scarab will be traveling through here. What you want to do is wait like right here ish and then just stabby stab him. So again go in Ashes of War. I already have it here. Uh, if you want to use dual wield you're gonna have to duplicate the Ashes of War because obviously there's only one of each. Uh, you can do that at the round table hold. Let me show you guys a demonstration about how this stomp works. So you can just walk off because they're dead already. <laughs> so basically there's one initial a little damage it does, and for most enemies it won't stagger them. It's really the second explosion that will do most of the damage and will stagger enemies. So be mindful of that when uh, you're fighting. Bye. So as you can see it does damage initially and then the burst of uh, ice crystals does most of the damage. If you're fighting you know, higher enemies, you can wait until they get struck by the explosion and then go in and just uh, finish them off. Uh, that will save you not only FP, but it, you know, it won't get as boring as just uh, blasting everyone with the stomp everywhere. Enemies suddenly surrounding you? No problem. Just stomp. They're dead. I'm not too sure how useful the spear one would be, like especially in a boss fight, but I guess you could switch, you know, between two of them, because the thing about the Frost Stomp is that it's a complete boss melter. It will kill every freaking boss. I have literally gone through all the endgame bosses, and apart from the two last ones, it only took me one try to kill them all, and all I used was the freaking Frost Stomp. It's really, really stupid. And again, you can apply this to any weapon you like. You know, you don't need to use katanas like I am. This is just the build I had before. So now that we got our Ash of War, we got our Affinity, uh, on your weapons of choice. Let's look at the build stats. Now, I'm level 141, but you can still use these stats to guide yourself. So I have 55 dexterity, 55 intelligence, 30 endurance, 40 vigor, and 21 mind. So obviously your two primary stats for this build will be either dexterity intelligence or strength and intelligence. Again, it depends on the weapon type you're using and what the weapon scales with. If it scales better with strength, then do strength. If it scales better with dexterity, then choose dexterity. You also want some points in mind because the stomp does use 10 FP each time you use it. And for boss fights, you'll need a lot of it. So what you could actually do is have less points in endurance and vigor maybe you know i think 25 26 is a really good spot to have endurance for this build and then you can put all those points in mind and vigor is good to have a lot of but mostly end game in my opinion so you can you know get away with 30 vigor for most of the game your two primary dex intelligence or strength intelligence then vigor then endurance it's really not useful in this build to be quite honest and your dump stat aka where you want to put all your points left over will be mined again you can switch this up if you want to use the ash of war way more than you want to go in then just take points off endurance or vigor as i mentioned before so that's what i'm using obviously there are so many freaking talismans in this game that you could use but this is what i would run with erica's scar seal carrion filigreed crest Prostesis Wearer Heirloom, Ancestral Spirit's Horn. Now first, we're going to use the Carrion Filigreed Crest. You can buy this for 5,000 runes right here in the Lyrnia area again. It's in the west northern part of it. Uh, it's next to the King's Realm Ruins and it's really near Caria Manor. So if you come here, there will be a giant here. And he will sell you something. This thing lowers the FP consumed by skills. So this lowers the FP cost, and you can see now I have it equipped. Uh, and you see here the FP cost of the stomp is eight. Now if I don't have it equipped or I remove it, and I go back into the side of grace, look at my ash of war. Consumption is going to be higher. It's going to be a 10. So is it worth it? Is it not worth it? That's really up to you guys. It's not a massive difference, but it does make a difference. Now, Ancestral Spirit's Horn. It's found in Nokron Eternal City. Now, you can only get there after you've beaten Radon. Basically, you have to make your way through the Ancestral Woods 
And it's the same thing as Siofra River, if you did that already. There's basically uh, eight or six pillars that you need to light around the area. And then you, you can go beat the boss that is at the ruins. Now for the prosthesis wearer heirloom, I've shown it before in another video. But essentially, you want to do Millicent's questline in Caled. So you first have to go to Gowry Shack, you have to talk to him, he's kind of sus, you're going to notice. Um, he's going to ask you to find a girl called Millicent. She's right here, to the east, in the Church of the Plague. Basically, you need to save her from the Scarlet Wrath. You're going to need to go fight Commander O'Neill at the Art of Aeonia. You're going to get the item necessary. You bring it to Gowry, then you bring it to Millicent, and you're going to get the heirloom. But do keep in mind that Caled is a 60 plus area. So for our last talisman for this build, Merica's Sword Seal, we're gonna go get it together. So this talisman will raise all your attributes, including mind, intelligence, faith, and arcane. And the other version is called Merica's Sword Seal, but you can only get it endgame in the Halig Tree area. And it's a secret area that's 90 plus. So instead, we can come here to Siofra River. I'm at the riverbank side of Grace. And we're gonna want to go to this area exactly. Now be mindful of the freaking sniping dudes, they're so annoying. And they literally have aimbot because they never miss you. Even if you try to jump or, or dodge, it just doesn't work, they'll hit you. So again, we're just gonna pretend that they don't exist. It's fine. If I do, don't look behind me, and I don't see them, then are they really there? No, they're not. Anyways, just follow here. You probably don't want to go through enemies, but I don't care and I want to grab this item. <laughs> Jump up here. Watch out for this dude. He's one of those snipers. You want to take him out if you can. If not, it doesn't matter. You want to take this portal right here. It's gonna take you to the top of Siafra River where there's a waterfall and the um, the talisman will be there in the river. I really love how fast this game loves, dude. So once you're teleported, you're gonna wanna go across here. That enemy is 100% not dead. I just know it. And there is I think we need. So there you go guys, that's all you need to know for this build. It's super overpowered and you'll have really good damage not only in close range, but also medium range. And not only that, like the frost stomp, as I said, it is a boss melter you won't have a lot of trouble defeating any bosses with this build. So I really hope this guide was helpful to you. Let me know if you change anything or if you're doing anything different for your own build. And I'll see you all very soon.